We spend many years of our lives as students. You may be a student now, or you may remember what it was like to be a student. I want you to take a moment to think about your experiences in education and what being a student means to you. For most of my years as a student, I viewed my education much the same way that I'm sure many of us have throughout our lives. I would go to school, take notes during class, go home, study for tests, do homework, and then come back to school the next day and do it all over again. When I came to college here, I was excited to take classes that I was interested in and focus on something that I really wanted to learn more about. But I found that even though I was taking classes for a major that I had chosen, I was approaching my classes much the same way that I had all the years before. I fell into this routine where my semesters were divided into these roadblocks called midterms. And after a round of midterms passed, I would celebrate. But then I'd buckle down and get ready for the next round to begin. And it felt like I was always chasing that next deadline. I knew I couldn't survive like this for four years. For the first time, I asked myself, what do I want to gain from my time in college? The way I was headed, it felt like I was chasing a diploma and the highest GPA possible. I lost sight of my passion for learning. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that my question was more deeply ingrained in the way we define the role of students in education. I want to share with you how I came to challenge my beliefs about education and how I discovered the power of student voices in educational change efforts. I'm here today because I believe we can redefine what it means to be a student. I'm here to encourage you to reimagine the way you view your education. I want to start by sharing a vision with you. What would it look like if students took a more active role in their education? Imagine if, instead of simply being consumers of knowledge, students were encouraged to be creators of the education that they wanted. We can give students the support and the autonomy they need to engage in meaningful learning experiences that connect with their interests and their aspirations. Students would recognize the importance of what they were learning and the ability to acquire knowledge and apply it to situations that are meaningful to us is crucial for innovation. As students, instead of accepting our education the way it is, we can reflect on what works for us and what doesn't. We can change the way we view education on an individual level. For me, it started with changing my mindset towards exams. Not only did my midterms define my semesters, but they also affected my mood. And this was a problem for me because I was often disappointed with my performance on exams and I let my unhappiness from that completely overwhelm me. I didn't like that I was so deeply affected by things that were ultimately out of my control. I decided to rethink the way I approach tests. My new goal was to walk into every test feeling as though I had done my best to prepare for it. This new mindset has encouraged me to focus on the things that I can control, which is preparing for tests, and not so much on the final result. It's made me a happier person, and it's also increased my motivation to study. Through this process of reflection, through realizing what isn't working for us, and taking action to overcome them, we can become change agents in our education. We can change education not only on an individual level, but also within the system of higher education. I know this transformation may seem radical, but I believe this shift is inherently cultural. The culture of higher education influences the way we view education. And as students, we have the power to influence cultural change. We are aware of challenges we face in classrooms and around campus. We know what kind of environments we enjoy learning in the most. This gives us insights into creating a culture that listens to and values student voices. And we can share these ideas and these stories to influence reform in education. Many change efforts have appealed to people rationally through research and workshops. 
we can also make an emotional appeal that will resonate with people who can help us effectuate change. To show you the emotional appeal of student stories, I asked my friends to reflect on their motivations for studying engineering and some things that frustrated them about their degree, about their education. I would like to share a few of their stories with you. This first quote is taken from a student from the United States. I'm studying engineering to gain skills and experience as a problem solver. I strive to really understand what I learn, but oftentimes courses hamper this due to the stress of grades. This cultivates goals oriented around scoring well on tests and detracts from the grand purpose of solving the world's problems. This next quote is from a student who goes to school in Canada. While I was an undergraduate student, I took the perspective, although I'm good at engineering, I really don't like what I'm doing in school, so I don't think an engineering career would be right for me. Now reflecting back, I realize that I should have been thinking, I love engineering, but my engineering education is driving me to think that engineering is not a good fit for me. And this final quote is taken from a student who goes to school in Brazil. After I started studying engineering, I got to the conclusion that a lot of universities are graduating professionals that are not sensible and creative enough to create solutions to the world. What frustrates me the most is that common sense that tells us that the engineer is just a logical and mathematical brain, ignoring the need to train a professional that has skills to involve people, to use emotion and logic to create useful solutions to the world. These stories demonstrate the misalignment between students' motivations and their frustrations in college. And though I only showed you three stories today, these feelings are common in college campuses from around the world. While I was collecting these stories, I encountered something that I wasn't quite prepared for, resistance. It was difficult for some students to take the questions that I was asking seriously. And I realized that the questions that I was asking them, what motivates you? What do you hope to achieve with your degree? What frustrates you about your education? These questions involved reflecting on education on a much deeper level than questions that we were usually asked on course evaluation forms. Those questions are about the quality of teaching and the quality of the classes we take, but we're generally not asked about what our education means to us or if we feel that our education is helping us achieve our aspirations. This experience showed me how difficult it can be to engage in reflection especially because it is something that we're not often asked to do. And because it can be difficult to reflect on education and talk about change, we created a space for students to support each other through a movement called Students for a Whole New Education. Students for a Whole New Education grew out of Big Beacon, a social movement to transform education through cultural and emotional change. We are a growing network of students who believe in the power of student voices in higher education. We are currently a group of students spanning across five countries in North America, South America, and Europe. We are brought together by our shared vision for an education that is about more than just getting a degree, an education where students are actively engaged in learning and are passionate about what they are studying. We started talking about our experiences in education and the role of students in change efforts. And we are beginning to share our stories to inspire other students to be reflective as well. Our goal is to empower students to become change agents in education. We have a choice. We can choose to maintain the status quo, or we can take this opportunity to shape our own paths in education. The best part is, we don't have to do it alone. We can build a community to support each other. And as students, we have many supporters. They're professors, advisors, administrators, staff, many whom I've met on this campus who have graciously taken time out of their schedules to talk with students and listen to them. There are many challenges to creating and sustaining institutional change efforts. But we live in an exciting time for change. There's a bounty of social science research and motivation and change theory. Many of the ideas I presented in this talk are derived from Daniel Pink's work on motivation and Dave Goldberg and Mark Somerville's A Whole New Engineer. We have the tools we need, and it's up to us to use them to our advantage. 
For so many years, I was passive about my education. I accepted the system as it was, and I did my best to succeed in it. I didn't think there was a place for students in education reform. But over the past year, I have met many people who have inspired me to challenge my beliefs about education. I have felt the collective power of students who are united and motivated by the promise of change. And I'm here now, sharing my story with you. When we have the courage to come together and share our stories, we can realize the power of student voices to create the changes that we hope to see in our education. We can redefine what it means to be a student. We can reimagine our education. Thank you.